Okay. Um, so um, we're delighted to introduce Oliver Kudel um, to come to speak today, uh, co-founder of We Made That, um, and his background is, is in architecture. Um, and it is, he st states that his intent is to be logically utopian, playfully analytical. It's a nice, nice intent. Um, and recent projects include uh, Nuclear is Good, What Will It Take to Convince You? Um, which is a series of speculative at urban newspapers. Um, so, we have time coming in. Yeah, whenever you're ready. Protective barrage cloud. 
Um, each of these kind of article, given that science has failed to put forward a convincing argument to the UK public over the last 60 years, how else can we frame this argument? What other tools are available to us? And as someone interested in architecture and infrastructure, is there either an infrastructure solution or a social solution um, or some way of dealing with the, the risk and benefit um, ideas around how to balance dilemmas, how to act accordingly, overcoming nimbyism, uh, public good and accountability, accountability mechanisms are all things I'm interested in. I'll skip through these quite quickly because the film um, explains them in more detail. Um, energy Uber Eden, so, so if you have a low carbon energy source, um, you're revaluing your, your use of energy in many ways. And what kind of unique offer might that bring? Does it, can, you know, does it bring ski slopes, real, sco real snow ski slopes to Essex? Um, what options might emerge? Which economic zones might emerge from that? It's really looking at kind of how you incentivize these choices and how smart energy and climate change has incentivized them already, going further, going one or two steps further than they have already suggested. And when it comes to nuclear waste, or how, to, how to look at the options available, um, I guess we've already heard about um, kind of a long-term waste uh, storage solution, um, but there's also others out there. Stuart Brand is, is, is one of, the, of um, basically, Planning short, optioning long, which essentially means putting investment into trying to solve this nuclear waste burden rather than sticking it all in a hole deep in the earth ground for generations to uh, have more problems with, essentially. But then, how to um, pander, perhaps, perhaps pandering to perceived hazards and which or what um, emergency services or appropriate response uh, might allay some of those fears, whether irrational or rational, whether based on scientific facts or on uh, human fear, um, maybe these offer uh, an expedient solution to um, driving a, a pro-nuclear argument. And some of these, this one, for example, um, the anti-cyclone defense zone so was based on, um, in France, after Chernobyl, um, French press, obviously, the French are quite high in investing in nuclear energy. And um, there were reports in the media immediately after Chernobyl that uh, uh, localised pr protective meteorological effect essentially pushed the radioactive cloud magically around France, and so there were no ill effects. And so this is part of the kind of um, the propaganda, I guess. But if that was enough to um, set up France's nuclear industry for the last 25 years, then is, it, is that a believable propaganda? So if, if you could create with balanced energy this meteorological effect, would that be a, an agreeable solution? And again, more about how you might incentivize unique offers. But also the kind of ethical side, um, the US program Megatons to Megawatts, for example, is um, disarming um, US and Russian nuclear arsenals and using that fuel for nuclear energy. And so that some, somehow, perhaps, that um, undermines some of the highly ethical arguments that a lot of um, green uh, energies put forward. And so I just wanted to quickly um, mention that essentially this um, culminated, this set of research culminated in a presented proposal for an alternative nuclear energy futures through a guided tour to Bradwell Nuclear Power Station in Essex, which is the site of a potential, uh, potential proposed nuclear power station. And um, in attendance were nuclear engineers um, who from, from the local authority, um, designers and people who have some in-depth or interest in, in nuclear energy. And essentially these um, proposals were expected proposals were presented as a way of opening the discussion. And one last thing before I show the film is essentially that all sounds quite far-fetched, but it's 
not that far beyond some of the examples and some of the questions that the government and others in the UK and abroad are already exploring. Uh, on the left there actually is the, the direct defence newspaper explaining the meteorological effect. Unfounded 
ideas about nuclear is that there could be some kind of catastrophic incident that would release radiation into the atmosphere. Well, how would you go against that? And how would you engineer a solution that could solve that? The proposal I'm talking about is basically a protective barrel cloud, a large scale cloud hovering over the station, tethered, and in case of incident, can simply be dispersed and radioactive particles would simply be dissipated into space. So this may well, quite simply, sit over top of that. But that's the idea of something like that seem crazy to you too. Yeah. It does. <laughs> it's a good idea having the container. We do have that container. Uh, for instead of putting over the whole thing, we actually put it over the bits where something dangerous could be kept. This, this is meant to comfort people. It's definitely a difference between the science and the facts that I know and what the public uh, think of this whole different And you, have, you do have to approach both the problems differently. I guess there's ideas where people just simply won't believe you or won't trust you in the kind of measures that you go to. Uh, there we go. That's about right, I think. Like that. Yeah, we Good. just did indicate that you're saying it like that. The problem with this cloud and stuff like that, it's, it's not really feasible on that kind of scale. Mm-hmm. It's fast, yeah. Is a spoonful of ice cream enough? Yeah. I imagine not the most people. <laughs> How many spoonfuls of ice cream do you have to get to before it's that tipping point? Yeah. Instead of mitigating these perceived hazards, what if we accepted a nuclear sweetener and opened the door to boundless energy benefits? If we were to take this to its logical conclusion, then we could use this energy to remake polar ice caps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, bring on. Yeah. The very unique possibilities that are created as a result of nuclear energy is an offer that is only open as a result of nuclear energy in order to use that amount of energy to produce ice no, etc. in Essex, in this situation, in the UK. So I'm going to talk next about, I guess, one of the other main uh, arguments against the energy, and that's um, nuclear waste. What to do with this huge boat? So we're going to take a little walk through the village, around to the village. Yeah. One teacup is one person's nuclear waste for a whole lifetime of nuclear electricity. Now, at the moment, the strategies for nuclear waste are to build a big hole and put all the nuclear waste in it for as long as possible so that it never gets touched. If benefits were offered for accepting responsibility of the waste, then this could be turned to your advantage. It becomes a huge asset. Well, how much is this worth? It, could, it, it seems to me to be an investment opportunity. You have a carbon rationing, but why would it be possible to ration nuclear waste to the point where you have your personal allowance? This is not something I offer at any point. <laughs> Currently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that actually puts me off. That seems like a lot, but that's just me. That we don't know what to do with. It's certainly kind of No, but I'm just, I'm just saying, in a way, it's something you don't know how to deal with, no matter how small. There's a level of irresponsibility attached to it that you can't get down. Well, you could argue that we're in the meta right now because people didn't afford to plan with our current technology. Climate change is happening because we didn't plan for our CO2 releases and our global Exactly. 
point, which is kind of what we're saying here. We don't know what we can do. It's true. So well, at least like now we have the sign to keep it in a form where it's still solid and it's liquid. It sits it's on the ground and we still got it, whereas CO2 is gone, done its damage. How do you have safe energy now and safe energy in the future? Yeah. Rather than going well. <laughs> what is the real alternative? And given that there's warnings about energy shortages, how do we plug the energy gap? The shaping and convincing of that argument, how you design that argument for nuclear, is more complex than just the scientific one or the economic one or uh, it's actually more subjective and nuanced with people's uh, weaknesses about it.